If you were forced to live in a video game for a challenge to see how long you could survive, which game would you pick? Some might choose Pokemon, Animal Crossing, those who are hardcore might pick Doom, but a very enticing option is Minecraft. The world of Minecraft seems to be closely related to that of our own, but just how similar are they? Could a regular person survive in the world of Minecraft and for how long? First, we'll have to see how scientifically accurate Minecraft's world is to ours and take the average person's capabilities to see how they would fare. Next, we'll have to find the best strategies and hopefully find a way to survive and live long term. This is how long you could survive Minecraft in real life. To start, let's compare Minecraft's world to ours. The version that will be used in this video will be the latest one, and to be fair, any version could work, but for big changes and updates, adjust as you go. For dimensions of blocks, as well as distance and time differences, we're going to use the Minecraft wiki as our unit of measurement. One block is about 3 feet by 3 feet, or 1 meter, meaning that a regular oak tree is 18 feet tall and mobs like zombies and skeletons are all 6 feet tall. If anything, the scariest size of a mob would be an enderman, which is almost 9 feet tall, or surprisingly a bee, which is a literal block that's floating around. Size in the Minecraft world does not matter too much, but it's important to be aware of how big things are compared to yourself, as some people might have a height disadvantage. Time is also faster in Minecraft, as about 1 hour in the game is 50 seconds in real life and a day only lasting 20 minutes, which means that days go by faster and is very dangerous as hostile mobs spawn during the night. This will be important for strategizing later, but for now let's focus on a very pressing matter, water and hydration. Oceans and lakes in Minecraft are not explicitly told to be salt water or fresh water. One can assume that all oceans are salt water, but seeing as how there are no differences in bodies of water across the overworld other than color, all water in this experiment is fresh water and is able to be drank. But hold on, in vanilla Minecraft, the player does not need to worry about drinking water. All they have to worry about is food. And while yes, players don't have to worry about this, you as a human do. You are not a player in the Minecraft world but a human, which has important distinctions. For one, food and water. While players have a UI that shows their health at hunger bars, you don't. Instead, you have to pay attention to your diet and food supply, which is surprisingly an advantage as something like a steak is more filling to a person than a Minecraft player. So now that we are listing distinctions as a human rather than a player, let's clarify some rules. For one, many people such as Matt Pat from Game Theory have done the math to show that Steve, representing the Minecraft player, having an inventory means that he is able to carry an insane amount of weight, and him punching is that of a superhuman. This means that all the mobs around him are also extremely strong, as they are able to keep up with the player at a reasonable level and are able to resist punches. If you want to keep all the moms as strong as Superman, by all means keep these facts in the back of your mind. However, for the sake of this video, all mob strength are relative to you. This might seem like an unnecessary advantage, but make no mistake, if anything, all this does is spare you the mercy of a quick game over. Now that we've established that, and while we're on the topic of the inventory, humans don't exactly have one. See, Minecraft players are able to carry an assortment of items in their inventory, and since people don't have that, they're only able to carry things in their pockets or make a makeshift backpack using a chest. Also, let's say that blocks themselves will shrink down when broken and collected, and only until you place them down, they are at their regular size. Crafting is also a major aspect in Minecraft. In Minecraft story mode, crafting seems to represent how realistic it could be. So taking a look at that to show how a person can craft in Minecraft is important. It is important to note though that since crafting recipes are in the UI of a Minecraft player, people won't have access to them in the game. So remembering recipes is going to be crucial to survive and that could mean the difference between life and death as not remembering how to craft something like a fishing rod completely cuts off one revenue of food. But wait, since humans don't have an inventory and a way to craft on their own without a table, how can you even make a crafting table? The simple answer is that you can't. People will have to find a village with a crafting table already in it, and this will make surviving the game painfully difficult. Finding a village can be difficult, there being a 50% chance to find one 500 blocks away from spawn, but it is not impossible. But until a crafting table is found, the person playing is at the most vulnerable. Now that we have established relevant distinctions and rules, let's now focus on the dangers and ways that you can meet a game over. First, let's go over the mobs that come out in the night. If the person playing in the game has not found shelter, 
shelter by the time night falls, they are undoubtedly screwed. Zombies may seem like a trivial battle in Minecraft, but when approaching them as a human, things quickly change. Also, just a side note, you will not turn into a zombie if you interact with one. Although that could make this challenge more interesting, the only mobs affected by zombies are villagers, so let's just say you are unaffected by the virus. Still, coming in contact with more than one puts you at risk. Just one will scratch you, bite you, and give you injuries, but three or four at a time could overwhelm you if you are not careful. Also, keep in mind you won't be able to regenerate wounds or injuries because you are a human, and will have to treat them by various methods we'll cover later in the video. Skeletons are deadlier than zombies, however, because just one arrow will be game over. Even if you are shot in the arm or the leg, if you handle it improperly, you could succumb to an infection. Though they are easier to beat if you are smart by simply disarming them and taking away their bow. Next up are creepers, which are easily the worst mob to encounter in the overworld. Them blowing up near you will do a lot of damage, and even if you survive, you might have to live with permanent consequences. Avoiding them altogether is the best strategy. Endermen are a unique case, because while they are very powerful, they will only attack if provoked. So by just being aware of them and not looking straight at them, you can safely be around them. Dealing with them is also somewhat trivial, as you can use their height as an advantage by hiding in a hole or making a short roof above your head. Those are just the most common mobs you will most likely encounter. But others like pillagers and evokers also exist and are also really deadly though they are uncommon so if you see one just run another huge danger similar to the endermen are spiders as opposed to spiders in real life in minecraft spiders are almost as big as the player and are only hostile if provoked and during the nighttime what makes them scary other than their size is the fact that they are able to climb over walls and you cannot avoid them by building up this is yet another reason to avoid being in the nighttime you may be wondering at this point what about the nether and while some could argue that going in the nether is a bad idea others could point out that there are high rewards there's a lot of loot and resources you could fight in the nether, especially in bastions and fortresses, but also a lot more dangerous. Lava being everywhere is not helpful, and mobs like gas shooting explosions at you is hazardous. The biggest dangers are wither skeletons, blazes, and piglin brutes. Wither skeletons are a bit taller than regular skeletons, but instead of a bow, they have a sword, and will infect you with a sort of poison after each hit, which will lower your health. We can just say that it makes you slowly deteriorate and become weaker, and that is the least of your concerns, as being stabbed by a sword repeatedly is more of a pressing issue at that point. You can counter them by making a short roof, but with a lot of dangers usually present around them, hiding and avoiding them is a better bet. Blazes are also something you will encounter, especially in fortresses, and will set you on fire over and over again, which just being hit once will certainly be fatal if you are not careful. Them also being able to fly over you is a challenge to deal with, but they do have to take a while to reload after every few bursts of flame blasts. You will most likely encounter piglins everywhere, but they will ignore you if you are wearing gold, which is convenient. If you invade a bastion, however, piglin brutes will not offer you the same mercy, and are equipped with axes and are very strong. Even if you have armor and a shield, just three of them will be enough to beat you, and being cornered by them is game over. Other mobs like hoglins and zombie pigmen are easy to avoid by building up or just being aware, but make sure not to underestimate any mob in the nether, especially the magma slime, which jumps a lot further than you'd think. Being able to navigate the nether itself is also challenging, there being holes for lavas and broken structures. There is a lot of rewards and loot in places like bastions where you can find gold blocks and chests with netherite and diamond armor. So with all this in mind, is going to the nether even worth it? All these materials are things you can get in the overworld minus the netherite, and sure it might take long, but that's better than risking your life battling monsters in literal hell. Or so you would think. See the most valuable resource is not the gear, or the gold, or even the netherite, it is the blaze and nether warts. To make potions, you first need a brewing stand. In order to craft one, you need a blaze rod. Nether warts are also needed to craft potions, and are found quite easily in the fortress. Having Having access to potions is so crucial to staying alive and healing your wounds that risking your life for them is 100% worth it. Potions of healing and regeneration can be used to nurse you back to health, curing all your injuries. And potions such as fire resistance and water breathing will also be convenient to have. This is all nice and good, but if you can't even survive the overworld, how can you survive in the nether? Okay, with all the dangers and possibilities of the game, note how good are your chances of survival. Let's go over the optimal strategy to surviving as a human in the Minecraft world. First, you spawn in. You have a wide range of possibilities from here from starting in a forest, desert, or an unlucky island. All you have is a blue t shirt purple pants, and gray shoes. Depending on where you spawn, you might have a good chance of survival, but the best spawn is preferably in a forest, near a lake, or a village. Walking around and exploring should be your first step and locating a village. If you cannot find one in time, it is best to break blocks in a mountain or a dirt cliff and just stay there for shelter. If you have shelter for the first night, you guarantee survival. Even a simple dirt hut 
is plenty, but not having access to a crafting table hurts your chances significantly. That should be your main goal. At this stage, you are able to survive without one, just drinking water from lakes and punching cows to death for food, although that might wear you out, and a bed would be very important. Once you find a crafting table in a village, your next step should be securing your home. A village is a perfect place to stay, so long as you build up walls and defenses so that hostile mobs aren't able to go in. Torches are also important to prevent mobs from spawning. A farm or a reliable source of food should be next, but as long as you're able to stab a few chickens every so often for food, you should be fine. Your worst enemy at this point is the night, and you should take every step you can to avoid harmful mobs. Start by making a strip mine below for resources, and be generous with your placement of torches. Some helpful tips at this stage is to make many panic shelters, whether in the tunnels of your mine, and if you go exploring on various paths. Make sure to put supplies in them for emergency, and also have a shield everywhere you go. Over preparing with diamond armor is very necessary, and make sure to get enchantments on everything you have, before you think about even going to the nether. Honestly, at this stage, if you are careful, you're able to survive without potions. Just know that if you mess up at any point and get in a creeper explosion or fall off a large height, there is little you can do to recover. The best alternative to potions will be enchanted golden apples, but seeing as how you cannot craft them and have to do a lot of exploring to find any, there is almost as much risk in that as there is going to the nether to get brewing stand. Instead, stockpile on regular golden apples and use them to heal as necessary. Even the most prepared players can get lazy or unlucky, as many Minecraft hardcore players have proven in the past. There are just too many dangers and risks which normal players wouldn't have to normally think about, though hard work can pay off. And if you decide, you can go all the way to the end to get an elytra or two and start flying around the world. With all this in mind, it's fair to say that a person can survive living in Minecraft.